rummaging around in a cupboard where I store a couple of cable locks. I don't own too many cable locks, but I do have a couple which I use now and again uh, for my bike. I mean, I live in a very, very low crime area, so using such cable locks is perfectly acceptable if I'm just popping into a shop or something, uh, just to give me a little bit of extra peace of mind. But I realise that if somebody really wanted my bike, they could easily get it. Well, uh, while I was rummaging around in that cupboard, I found a product which I've owned for quite a while, and I really don't know why I haven't done a video on it before now, because it's quite an unusual product, and I think it deserves some time under the spotlight. So here it is, it's called the Safeman by Tektronix, oh, other sides, or Tek Tektory rather, not Tektronix, um, Tektory, and um, it is a convenient little cable lock, um, that's designed to be very portable. It certainly is. It's palm size. You can uh, put it in your pocket or your backpack. And it's designed to be a very uh, adaptable uh, little cable lock. Um, this would have cost me about £5 from Lidl when I bought it. I don't know if they still make these or not, but uh, you can buy them online for around about £20, which is a lot more than I'd be willing to pay for it and um, a lot more than I did pay for this. Um, so the body itself is actually made of uh, hard plastic. I think you would need a tool to break it. It's not You're not going to smash it with your hands. Uh, the cable on it is about 5mm thick uh, and it's got a wafer core so right away I can tell you this is not a high security lock. It's just something for convenience and they suggest that this would be good for securing um, skis, uh, prams, and just loose uh, movable object, objects like that. I mean, I, I could see this perhaps being used uh, to tie your suitcase to something if you had to leave it unattended. Um, the, the idea is that it's not a high security lock, it's just a very adaptable uh, little product. So the way it works is we've got this uh, rotating ring, and we can pull off the cable like this. And we've got 28 inches of steel cable with a rubber uh, coating on it and a little nice ferrule on the end. And uh, on the body itself we have uh, some holes which go right the way through to the other side. So the idea is that you take the cable and you, with the key out of the lock you feed the cable through like this and you can create uh, a giant loop like this, uh, which you can secure around your object, or if you want you can create two loops by passing the cable through and coming back round through the other set of holes here. So if I make this smaller so you can actually see it, it's so big it's going out of frame. So there you go, you've got a nice little loop like this, and they do show it being used uh, to secure, secure the back wheel of a bike. Uh, to the frame. I suppose that could be another use for it. Uh, it's just a, a very nice adaptable little lock. It, it, by the way, it locks automatically, so um, when you pull on this it tightens and you can't pull it back out. Um, so of course to unlock it you just take your key, put it in there, turn it 90 degrees clockwise, and that allows you to release the cable. And of course you can just wind it back onto the onto the drum here by turning the ring and stick it in your pocket and off you go. So, cool little idea and uh, I think somebody has actually sat down and thought about this um, and I, I really like the fact that they've, they've really put some thought into it. I mean it's not a high security product but it's not complaining, it's not um, it's not claiming to be a high security product. So how does it work? Well, if we look in these holes here we can see some locking poles. Uh, these are closer to one side than they are the other, so this one's more over to this side. And these locking poles are, they swivel back and forth, they're under spring tension, and they're kind of tapered to a point like this, and there's teeth all the way up the side of them. So when we feed the cable in here, let me see if I can show you this. So when we feed the cable in here, you can see Maybe if we zoom in a bit more, we can actually see the, uh, the locking pole in there. Come on, focus. 
it is under spring tension so we can shove this right in here and the idea is that those teeth come back like this if you try pulling pulling this cable out of here you can't do it because the the teeth just dig in a lot deeper okay um, and that's essentially all it is and then when you put your key in it just retracts the locking lug like that so quite a simple mechanism it does it, it, it is double sided so you can put it in this way or you can put it in that side which is quite cool okay so um, what about uh, getting into this um, I have discovered a couple of weaknesses with this which I wish to share with you if I can fight with this cable and get it in um, so let me see right so I'm going to put the cable in from this side like that okay so that's all locked up our key is over here all locked up whoops and that's not going anywhere okay so we can just about see the locking lug in there and in order to pull this cable out of here I think we're going to have to move the lug down like this so I think what I'm going to do is take this hook and try and catch it on the teeth of this locking lever pull the locking lever in that direction and pull the cable out sounds confusing let's see if it works okay so I'm just having difficulty oh there it goes got it caught on the on the little lever oh it's stuck let's see if we can get the head of it through and there we go open okay so essentially all I'm doing there is grabbing hold of that locking lug and pulling it back towards me alright so what if the cable goes in the other um, direction so if it goes like this okay in that case it's not practical to put a hook down there and drag the pole back because um, the pole is right over here it's going to be difficult to get a hold of so what I'm now going to do is the opposite thing so I think uh, the locking lever is like this again it needs to swivel down that way so what I'm going to do here is take a uh, flat broken pick like this and try and push the locking lever in like that I think that's done it and yep that allows us to pull the cable out okay so a couple of weak points there now again you really have to look at the whole thing it's not a high security product and I don't really think that if anybody was faced with this I don't think they would um, actually um, I don't think they would know about these weaknesses really and um, if somebody really wanted at what this was securing they'd get it one way or another and uh, they'd probably just cut through this thin cable all right so um, I'm sure most of you aren't here to listen to me blather on some of you will be here to watch me pick this so let's try that right now I'm gonna feed that through there as if it were locked up like that and let's attack this core so what we've got right here is a wafer core and I believe this has five wafers in it and we've got this big shutter on the front which is going to get in the way quite a lot so let's see if we can deal with that okay so I'm going to turn it around this way I think you can just about see in the core there we do have some warding we've got warding right there and some down there as well so that's that's going to be quite difficult to deal with we can see the wafer up here are the wafers so I'm just gonna try and go in with a half snowman and see if we can just jiggle this open it's actually very difficult to get get hold of because this ring spins I just put the half snowman in there okay I got a little bit of a turn on the core a big click there that let me turn the core and that's it open okay I do apologize that this video is going out of frame a lot it's very difficult to get all this to stay in frame okay so as you can see it's quite an easy product to bypass and pick and whatnot but for some reason I don't feel like condemning this product 
because, like I said, somebody's really thought about it, somebody's put some effort into designing it, and um, it isn't claiming to be a high security product. If you were to use this to secure your bike, then, well, it's your own fault if your bike gets stolen. Uh, I could see this being good as a maybe a backup bike lock, maybe using this to uh, lock your wheel to the frame and a D-lock to lock your frame to uh, whatever the object is. You just need to use your imagination and uh, I'd be really interested to know, if you guys let me know down below, what would you use one of these for? Because it's such an adaptable little product and it's great, I love it. It's you know, pocket size, very portable, and although it's made of plastic, it has a wafer core and uh, everything else that's wrong with it, it's, for all that, it's not all that bad, and for the price that I bought this, which was about £5, uh, you get what you pay for, and um, I think this is quite a neat little thing. I just wanted to share it with you because it's such a, an unusual little product that people should know about. Anyway, uh, I've done a little bit of research into this, uh, and I discovered that I am not the only person in the Lock Sports community who has had a look at this. Um, Potty314, in one of his earlier videos actually, took one of these apart. So, uh, somewhere at the end of this video, up in the top right hand corner there, there will be a little flashcard uh, where I recommend you go and check out his video where he took one of these apart. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this unusual little video on a security product. I uh, quite like these bizarre security products. And uh, if you did, then please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to like. Thanks very much, everybody, and I hope to see you again soon.